Britain is a hugely diverse religious society. Trump and Tory MP. Each nudist from the new... How long ago was this? What up? What up? What up? What up? Yo, yo, got one of them stank little cylinders to cleanse the room. I said, give me a, give me a tiny little pillar, pillar of, of salt, a tiny little one half of Jake and Boaz.
Y'all want it to be jacking or y'all want it to be the Boaz? This audience looks like a bunch of jacking. So we got to cleanse the spirits in the room with my little cylindrical magical object. We're getting witchy tonight. And, uh, you know, we had we had fun doing a, a witch talk the other night about a week ago. And I uh, got a lot of views, had a lot of fun. And I said, it's time to have more fun. So the world's getting crazy and we're getting fun, which makes no sense. But what I mean, what else are you going to do? Right. So I'm cleansing the room with sandalwood. And uh, you notice that all of these that you buy at the hippie shop, it all smells the same. Everything smells like just one stanky hippie dude, right? It all, all of it, patchouli, sandalwood, sage. It all just smells like just one funky dude. That's it. They don't really differ that much. We even got a little piece of wood to see what it smelled like. And it smells like all this other stuff. And, uh, we're going to raise your vibration and your consciousness. I see a lot of people, uh, vibrating at mm, maybe 20 level, 20th level consciousness. Uh, as you saw last time, that helpful man with the gas station alligator shirt, uh, gave us the list of the degrees of enlightenment on his chart of his astral chart. So I see a lot of people in the audience that by your comments, I can tell y'all are uh, y'all are vibrating at about a, a, a 20 and you need to be up at about a 30. So welcome everybody. It's Witch Talk Night. Our buddy Kotel, he did a similar stream and they were having fun over there. So um, Jim Bob did a similar stream right where Jim Bob was doing it too, you know. Welcome everybody. What's up, pimp? Shout out to Vincent McTago, Vincent D'Onofrio in the chat. Shout out to Adam Benedict. That's a monastic style of name right there. Shout out to DC Woodwork. Sounds like a lot of corruption in the lawn chair business. DC corruption meets woodwork. Old men out there whittling. Old men whittling uh, lawn chairs for everybody to sit in. The corruption in the wood furniture market. Shout out to living the dream. Like and Shart, he says. Shout out to Petricor. Alright, let's get into it. We got all kinds of witches. And by the way, I'm going to include... I agree with Kotel. I'm going to include the evangelical prosperity people with my witch people and with my star seeds. And I'm going to argue that ultimately it all leads to this right here, the multiple personality disorder. <laughs> it all leads to the MPD DID documentary, which we'll watch a little bit of that here in a minute. But I've also got a little documentary for those that don't know about the history of witchcraft. I found this uh, British documentary. Uh, I think it's, I thought it was the one I watched many years ago. It's not actually. So let's get a little introduction to this one. There's an old British documentary from like the seventies on British witchcraft. And they interview a bunch of old crusty British backwoods lords people. And they, they're pretty rough, man. I mean, they're, I mean, they look like legit witches, you know what I'm saying? So let's get an introduction first. And then we're going to get over here to our witches, bitches, and some of that brew and some of that star seed. So, uh, who is this? This looks like um, Michael Caine if he was a hippie and got his face run over with a four-wheeler. And they just kept spinning that four-wheeler on his face because you can see it's pretty smashed up. So, so this is... a. Walmart discount Michael Caine after he got uh, turned into a hippie and his face runned over with the four-wheeler. Witches worship a goddess of nature 
and believe in the power to cast spells. Witches are among us. There's no doubt about it. A long-held presumption about us. That we've... Witches are always on the plump side, aren't they? Like, I mean, they emulate Mother Nature. They want to be spherical, like Gaia. Right, the witches... You, you know, you see posters and movies of witches and they're like, you know, babes and they wear tight-fitting witch outfits with, you know, slick back witch hair and tight leather witch pants, chaps, witch chaps and whatever. But no, real witches looking like... It's followers. Real witches look witches. like... I don't know, like just your your art ho cousin, you know. Witches are among us. There's no doubt. Of they all look like that. That's what I'm trying to say. That's your average British babe right there. <laughs> In Britain, that's an eight, right? <laughs> about it, a long-held presumption about us that we no, worship we the devil. Oh no, we don't. But the another witch, right? And what, doesn't this speak to the whole thing that we did with Rachel and Dr. Dutton, right? When we were talking about witches kind of being um, not chosen in the dating market, so to speak. So they're on the outside of the dating market. They're on the crust of the pizza pie, the dating market. You know what I mean? And it's true because they are the antisocial... Um, self-seeking elements right rejected by the social they become these sort of anti-social figures in the history of you know classical european witchcraft for example which i read several books on and so they're just not babes is what i'm trying to say and it's not an accident that witches are not actually babes only in like a, a few movies and posters no that, that's not it's not how witch there's no doubt about it a long-held presumption about us that we worship the devil. Oh, no, we don't. But the mo Oh, no, we don't. How come witches don't do spells to be hot? Right? If they had the power... And by the way, witches advocate for using their bitchcraft. I'm not joking. That's actually a thing that Anton LaVey talks about in The Satanic Witch a lot, Jamie. I'm not saying Jamie's a satanic witch. I'm saying Allah her referencing. She's a living reference book like myself. If you saw today's show, right? And how come these witches don't got a hotness spell? Do a little of a, a babe spell, at least. At least a little bit of a, just a maybe 10, 15 pounds off spell, right? You don't have to do a, I don't know. Megan Fox, Gal Gadot, Jamie Henshaw spell. You hear that? You hear that? I likened you to the babes. How come the witches don't do a spell to look like babes? If they, if they got magic powers. Jamie has no answer. She's silent. She doesn't even know. See? The craft... That's a good point. So part of Spooktober, uh, as you guys know, uh, we do Spooktober. And that's where we uh, pick out spooky movies to scare y'all. And for many years, it's a tradition over here on my channel. We've done the classics. We've done all the John Carpenters, right? Uh, we've done alien movies. We've done it all. And this next time around, we're going to do uh, MKUltra Mental Institute movies which we've only found one of those that was actually good so far. No, two. We found two. So Spooktober's coming up soon. Jamie and I are going to be doing Mental Institute NK Ultra Horrors and The Craft, or The Crap, if you want to call it that. Witch Crap. We're going to be doing The Witch Stream. So this fits well into the upcoming Spooktober stream where Jamie and I will be covering the top. How many? Five? Five or six witch movies. Uh, we've already done Shutter Island, so you're talking about Shutter's Island. 
Uh, that sounds like something at, at Home Depot. So now we're not doing Shutter's Island. We're doing, we already did Shutter Island a few months ago. But uh, that's a nice, it's a nice suggestion. So let's get back to the witches and the wizards. This is a real Hogwarts. Hogwarts is, is full of hogs in reality, right? Right? Jamie's in there. I can, are you laughing or not? I can't tell. Jamie's in there laughing because she's just, she's just glad she didn't go to Hogwarts. She got the invite. That CGI owl brought the invite. <laughs> Jamie's like, no, nah, it's a bunch of chunky chicks. I'm not going. The most extraordinary thing about Wicca is the story of how it was born. Because while it looks like an ancient folk religion, Wicca was uh -oh. actually oops. developed in the 1940s. Uh, oops, it's not an ancient religion. You just got debooped. How many times over the last 10 years in a podcast have I told you that Gerald Gardner created it? It's not an ancient religion. I've told you a million times because it's true. And even the documentary is noted. He's by a middle-aged nudist from the New Forest called Gerald Gardner. He once said he... This is why even Tripoli, right? Tripoli did a podcast the other day. He was like, dude, the witches is just... Old dude trying to get laid with goth checks. I'm convinced, dude. That's all it is. That's what he says. And he's right because that's what I said. He was highly devious. He wasn't a typical founder of a religion. King of the witches. His hair goes this way. His beard goes that way. He was witchcraft. I'm Professor Ronald Hutton. As a historian of British paganism, I've been studying Wicca for over 20 years. In this film, I'm going in search of the truth about this secretive. Oh, he looks like a, a healthy, uh, masculine specimen of a man, don't you think? Right? I mean, the British lords and elite ladies looking so fit, looking so archetypal of man and woman, right? Like I said, he looks like Michael Caine's uh, slow cousin that got his face grinded on by a four-wheeler. I mean, dude looks like a dang serial killer. Legit, right? But that's who rules us. Those are the better people. That's These are the, the best people. Thank you for that uh, big seven-footer super chat there. We'll talk about some super chats there. Man, we got to get introduced, right? We got to get introduced to the worldview and wait till you hear some of these young Witch ladies on TikTok. I mean, the, the level of delusion and divorce from reality, right? So because Kat Von D got baptized at some evangelical church, the witches on, <laughs> on Witch Talk, I'm not joking. They actually think that there's going to be another Salem witch trial in America and America's going to outlaw witchcraft and they're all going to get persecuted. Like, they think that it's... That it's... Uh, What's that? What's that show all the women watch that think they're gonna have their abortion rights taken away and it's gonna be a Christian patriarchy that oppresses them? What is it? Yeah, that witches think Handmaid's Tale's the reality out here. I mean, just totally divorced from reality. If you would hit like and share, if people are saying, "I wish," yeah, everybody knows that that's completely ridiculous. All right, let's. We gotta learn. We gotta learn the craft, right? Everybody, put on your hats. Grab your sticks and twibble dibble dabble. Twibble, twibble your dibble dabbles. It's time to go to Hogwarts. Grab your dibble dabble and touch your Dumbledore. I mean, all that gibberish, who knows what they're even talking about, right? I can't tell the difference between normal British slang and terms and Hogwarts. It's all the same to me. Motorized rolling cams. Magical. Faith. I want to find out how this extraordinary Englishman reinvented witchcraft. Talking about Harry Potter, a lot of people find I'm, that I'm... problematic. Dude, look at that dude. Do you think he fancies himself a lord? <laughs> or does he fancy himself a lady? If maybe he fancies himself a lord and a lady. 
And unless we're talking about Harry Potter, he just a lot of people find he that just fancies. problematic. Problematic, toxic. Actually, the language is problematic and toxic. To the public, Wicker is often seen as mysterious, secretive, maybe even dangerous. But is this fair? I've been studying Wicker for two decades, Whoa. and I have yet to be turned into a frog. But if I'm Good one, really dude. going to... <laughs> Good one, dude. ...to understand Wicker, I need to get beyond the textbooks and get under the skin of this religion. But first, I need to find them. And as Wiccans are notoriously secretive, even that's a... Just get on Witch Dog, dude. What are you talking about? ...challenge. Oh yeah, they're secretive, right? Like, in the age of anything goes, witches are having to hide out and be secretive. I've been invited to attend a ritual of a Wiccan group, which is quite an honor. Unlike other faiths... Big honor. Yeah, to really honor. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> such an honor. When Wiccans go to worship, they don't go to a church or a temple. They go somewhere altogether different. They go to the tube. Modern witches are often urban creatures, but as a reverence for nature lies Now he's trying to now he's trying to pull a David Attenborough. Modern witches are urban creatures. See them here. Watch observe as the English pedophile the heart of their faith. The English pedophile rides the tube. They conduct their rituals in parks and woods about. right in the heart of the city. But despite this, you would never know they were there. Yeah. As an outsider, even though it's publicly on the website, and even though I emailed them to be invited, and even though I rode the tube, and even though they're on TikTok, who would know? Attending this ritual is a rare privilege. You notice he's more balded on one side than he is the other side. Get somebody to do a hair growth spell. Did he not think of this? To talk me through it is one of Britain's highest ranking Wiccan priestesses, Christina Oakley Harrington. This is a She got three names like a serial killer. Gorgeous looking place. Why have you chosen it? What are we going to do here? Well, we're in Queenswood, which has been used um, which by pagans has for been ceremonies used, for decades and decades. And what we're here to do is to have um, a Wiccan based ceremony. To remember what's sacred about us. Bays, dude. It's Red Pill Bays in Chad, Wiccan Ceremony. What's up? By the way, I want to remind you, speaking of based magic, guess what's new over at Chalk.com? Hopefully it's on there. Is the Chad. Chad Mode. Our sponsor. Guess what? Chad Mode. Look at that. Magic Blue, baby. Magic Blue Chad Mode. The ultimate way to get pumped up naturally. Chadmo will give you the edge that you need before any of your activities, especially before your workout, hiking, staying up late, or crushing it at work. Chadmo is a powder drink mix. Pre-workout formula. You guys are uh, a big fan of chalk out there. I know our audience really is. You definitely want to try out the max potency there uh, that they have in the Chad mode. Bring that thunder and get into Chad mode. Look at that. They even have the meme of the dude. The Chad dude meme is in the D. Big D. <laughs> it's not just some chemical like blue number one. Blue magic. And that's the term that he had to use because other things were copyrighted. He's not trying to put some witchcraftery on you. Uh, my boy over there is, is all good. He's solid. He's good. But that is the type of spirulina that he's using there in his, uh, in his mix. There's no nasty chemicals in it, just organic lemon, cherry, maple. Uh, and there is one dose per cup, right? Of cap, like one cup of caffeine, basically the equivalent of a cup of caffeine is also in your Chad mode, so there is a bit of caffeine as well as vitamins, minerals, and amino acids. So we got a new excellent pre-workout product over there at chalk.com. Use the promo code J50, that's JY50, to get 50% off, or J53LIFE, J53LIFE, to get 53% off all those recurring subscriptions. 
Let's get back to this ritual. It's so deep and mystical with these British babes in the woods. About our connection and our connection with the land and the place that we live. And it's customary in Wicca that there aren't observers. There are... Oh, they just using they just use an Aquafina. They're not even because she just pouring water out of a out of an Aquafina. They don't even care about how pure it is. Participants, so I'd like to invite you to join us if you'd be willing to. I'd be honored. I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> When doing a Wiccan ritual, she she been they've been watching Blair Witch Project. You see that? One feels in connection. That's a chamber pot. So to do British nice. magic, you got to get you got to get your aunt. You need a boomer aunt right there. Creepy uncle. Look at that dude in the background. That creep. Look, his hair looks like cobwebs blowing off of his back. Look at that. And it's. Uh, you need a a bowl. You need That's some Aquafina water. That need, uh, there aren't observers, there are only participants. So I'd like to invite you to join us if you're willing we to. We've got an ant, a bowl, a some aquafina. <laughs> we need the sun and the moon. We've got uh, something, props from Blair Witch Project. When doing a and a British chamber pot. That's your five ingredients to do the hand fasting wood ritual. I don't know what we're doing. Let's see what, what, what ritual you think we're doing here. Y'all know what a chamber pot is? I didn't say Chester Copper Pot. I said a chamber pot. Can Rachel, one feels in connection with something very, very old. Uh, a bunch of old garbage from the thrift store, right? Like that chamber pot and like that bowl. It's, and once again, we're going to see witchcraft really just being lazy, playing around with a bunch of garbage that's laying around. That's about it, right? Just lazy people don't want to flush the toilet. Uh, let's take that, use it in a ritual. Uh, got a bunch of junk laying around in the garage. Oh, that's magic. That's a magic pot. That's a magic chamber pot. And those things that we find deeply moving and beautiful, the moon, the sunsets. The she looks like somebody I went to high school with. Those parts of nature that we don't understand that give us a sense of mystery and awe. May this place be blessed and sanctified. It's all a bunch of ants. See, where's the, you know, this dude... I guess he was going for what he could get, get he what he thought was in his league, right? He's like, I'm going to try to hit on these goth chicks. You know, I look like run down Michael Caine underneath a four-wheeler. Probably not going to get one of the chicks on Witch Talk. So I'm going to shoot for, uh, you know, the box wine coven over here. <laughs> I'm going to go for the Virginia Slim coven. Can we make a Wiccan ceremony by casting a circle, and that's done with a wand. What it's like to cast a circle is to make a space that is completely within nature in order that we can leave us. Isn't every space completely within nature? I mean, literally every space exists within some outer encompassing nature. So there's the, I mean, I'm just saying, I'm just saying literally every space is within nature. So I'm not understanding this definition. So you got to be more uh, precise uh, my uh, auntie, I'm gonna start calling her auntie. Inside those things that we have to deal with every day, but this is a place of rest. Again, it's all boomers. There's a part of the ceremony in which we consecrate one another, and in that moment, we're doing the balancing act, which is remembering the divinity that dwells within. That's uh, straight out of the chamber pot right there. So when we consecrate each other with a sword. So there's like one young dude there and he's trying to mack on chicks and then he's disappointed because everybody there is like boomer age, right? In the water we're remembering. He's like, where's all the witch talk chicks from TikTok? They're not here. Ah, you know, you're a human being in front of me, but you two are divine. Blessed be. When doing a Wiccan ritual, one feels in connection with something very, very old and very beautiful and very connected. Uh, namely the boomers here, <laughs> right? So she's talking about being old. The, the, the connection that they feel that's really old is actually the age of the participants in the ritual. To the earth and all the tension of all the duties and all the things that we have to carry. I just feel it just draining away. Or that just could be because you're wearing some Depends. I mean, who knows, right? Blessed be. 
I want to know more about this uh, uh, Mamas and the Papas looking dude over here. He's this, this uh, meatloaf Mamas and the Papas dude over here that's got his hands all up. He's got his hands up in his in his coat. And we saw the cobweb wisps of his hair before, but uh, I feel that this is woman centric, right? We, we've not heard from any of our two male participants here, the teenage dude or the uh, British co uh, meatloaf dude over here. Now, I thought that was a lovely ritual. There's clearly more going on here than Very just a lovely. bunch of people having a good time in a wood. There's, yeah, there's a lot going on here. I mean, this this is some mind-blowing deep stuff, right? Something quite deep. Yeah, very deep. But does it bring me any closer to understanding what Wicker actually is? Rituals like this, with their reverence for nature, feel like the continuation of a very ancient tradition. But in fact, nothing not. could be further from the truth. Because Wicker doesn't have... <laughs> its origins in the mists of time, but in 1930s, Dorset. In 1938, a 52-year-old ex-colonial gent called Gerald Gardner retired with his wife to the south coast of England. This is Highcliffe an archetypal conservative English community with its village church, Rotary Club, and Tory MP. But hidden just beneath the surface just. 75 years just ago. Just beneath the surface. Sounds like, uh, sounds like Davy Jones. Jack Sparrow. ...was something a lot stranger, and Gerald wasn't long in finding it. For one thing, Highcliffe was a hot spot for naturists. And despite his eminently respectable appearance, Gerald liked nothing more than taking his clothes off. Well, Gardner moved to this area in 1938, and this is the house that he bought. Wow. Wow. So this is where he pranced around without clothes. And this is where Gerald and yeah, this is where Joe played a little bit of soccer while his bobbies bubbling around. The bobbies are public. Everybody in the neighborhood saw his bobbies bubbling. His nature's friends would have enjoyed the sunshine. It's almost a <laughs> perfect private nudist paradise. Private nudist paradise with a nice little soccer goal. Excuse me. Would you like to play some nude soccer? Excuse me, sir. Are you there? Would you like to play some nude soccer? Nice. It is large, it's sunny, it's open, yet it's well hidden. Gerald had found the perfect retirement spot, and he wasn't alone. Bankers, accountants, teachers, and a host of tea and scones types seemed to be keen on retiring disgracefully. We've got extraordinary evidence of this from a rather jokey piece which appeared in the Times in 1939. The instant success with the neighbours of the Elphinstone Road nudist colony has been marked. One old gentleman who has rented a second floor back says his outlook on life generally has entirely changed. Wouldn't, if you wanted to live nudist, wouldn't you want to be nude with these dudes, right? I mean, right? Right? I mean, it's just nature. It's just going back to nature. It's just Garden of Eden, dude. Soggy old British chaps playing a bit of nude soccer, a bit of nude football. In the last few weeks, he has now no use for his car or fishing tackle and wishes to exchange them for anything useful, such as telescopes, binoculars, or camera. <laughs> <laughs> the jokery! <laughs> the jokery! The jokes! Ah, jolly <laughs> And also, Gardner had a darkroom built, and I think... He they are playing nude. They're, they're not playing soccer, they're playing volleyball. Nude witch volleyball. He was going to um, develop and, and print his own photographs, but it may be that they are, were of a, a naturist nature, that oh. it's not the sort of thing you want to take. And also, what, what I remember was that he had tattoos on his arm, and I know of boys that they would cross the road 
because he was a bit odd looking. Mm, yeah. All right, so is anybody actually feeling like modern Wicca is a deep mystical thing? <laughs> I'm starting to detect it's just it's just a pervy old gramp, dude. It's just grampy getting getting funky, right? You know what I mean? So where is the mystical initiation coming from? That's what I thought I'm going to learn about witchcraft. What's going on? So, even with his clothes on, Gerald seemed different. It was rumored that his racy f What do you believe of the whimsy? Put some whimsy music there. When they're discussing his bibbly bobbly bubbling around when he's running around nude, be sure to put some whimsical music in the background. <laughs> whimsy! Sessions went along with a I'm nude! <laughs> whimsy! <laughs> Play the whimsical music! <laughs> and a taste for flagellation. Ooh, but Gerald a taste for it, Ma! <laughs> wasn't satisfied. He was seeking something stranger. And in 1939, he found it. Gerald was about to become a witch. Yeah! Fleetwood Mac, Daddy! Boom! How about that? Gerald Gardner was like, Fleetwood Mac? Call me the Fleetwood Mac, Daddy! Get it? Because she's a witch. Get it? Fleetwood Mac. Uh, what's her name? Stevie Nicks. Right? Stevie Nickers! <laughs> Stevie's in her knickers! Get it? Get it? Come on. This old house in Hampshire has a remarkable claim to fame, for it was here on a night in 1930. Look at that guy's shape. He's like. He's like a. I don't know. He's shaped like a pea green pyramid like a like a cake like a he's poured in there like a cake as he nine but a middle-aged man called gerald gardner was apparently initiated into witchcraft <laughs> i was blindfolded clasped from behind and told i give you the password gerald so blindfolded Knives on my breast touched from behind secret passwords i wonder where that came from hmm uh, is it possible that maybe they just copied and pasted like your boy Joe Smith did? Remember Joe Smith? What did he copy and paste his religion from the initial? Oh, Freemasonry. And guess what? Gerald, Gerald Gardner copied and pasted the initiation rites from Masonry when he made up his jibber jabber claims that he was stripped naked, brought into a room full of witches, all similarly nude, and then given the secrets of an ancient magical religion. Mm. I was then pushed through a doorway and into the circle. And then the word Wicca was mentioned. Wicca. Witch. They're witches. Witches still exist. How do all these dudes look like a old, bunch of old crusty creeps, right? Nobody in this documentary has even been remotely a, a five or above, right? It's like this is just this is just the this is, if you ugly, you're gonna be in this. It's, a, it's like attraction. The law of attraction is really just witches talking about ugly people coming to them. From that night until his death, nearly thirty years later, Gerald Gardner devoted his life to witchcraft. He appeared in the papers and on TV. He wrote books. And, crucially, he initiated others into Wicca so it would not die with him. So the establishment promoted him. Right. It was not counterculture. So all you dumb girls on TikTok, uh, you're not counterculture when the establishment gave you this ridiculous thing. The question is, what kind of man in 1930s England. This dude looks like he would be uh, one of the Harry Potter, one of the Hogwarts teachers, right? He's going to be the one that is secretly plotting against Harry, isn't he? I mean, everybody here has seen Harry Potter, right? They always have the the uh, uh, substitute teacher. And in every episode, the substitute teacher is the one that's secretly plotting against Harry. It would be this dude, wouldn't he? decides to become a witch. For clues about Gerald's journey to becoming Britain's most famous witch, we need to delve into his earlier life. 
Gerald Gardner came from a family that had made a fortune in the timber trade. He grew up in... All right, I'm not that interested in the origins of his background. So let's go forward a little bit here. And then we're going to move on to the witches themselves, right? And also I want to know about the mystical truths of nature that I don't know about in my religion. So enlighten me and learn me, educate me. Where's, where's the, we want to learn about the pentacle and the goddess, the triple goddess. And he published a novel and this is it. High magic's aid. Although it had to be disguised as a work of fiction, it is actually the first published account of Wiccan magic. This passage, one of many, describes how to conduct a classic Wiccan ritual. Upon the altar, the classic ritual that I just made up, the remaining pentacle. Also cords, black cloth, and other things which he would want for the operation. Taking this pentacle, he bound it with a cord and shrouded it with a cloth. It could be seen just as a, as a story, but for those in the know, you know, it was, uh, it was quite revealing. It included quite a lot of witchcraft rituals that are, are, are fairly familiar today. In some ways, it's a terrible novel. It's too many yees and, and privies and forsooths and vows. <laughs> Pope Innocent. So he put the Crusades, right? He put that in For there. For those in the know, you know, it... By a group of spiritualist MPs supported by Winston Churchill, who himself had become interested in the occult, the Witchcraft Act was finally repealed. Finally! By the way, did you know that uh, that's true? And we have covered this in the past, but... Harry up. Winston Churchill was a druid. See that right there? Installed into the Albion Druidic Lodge right there. So in case you didn't know that, that is actually true. Gerald was now free to out himself as a witch and to tell the world all about Wicca, which was by now developing into a fully fledged. He looks like a maniac. Like, like a, he looks like an insane old man religious system. Since his new forest initiation, Gerald had become something of a magpie, building- How did they get stock footage with a dude with an afro? And by the way, how do you get an old British guy to he have an afro, heaven by the way? ...from both English folklore witchcraft and modern shamanic magic for his spells and rituals, whilst the iconic symbols that would become synonymous with Wicca, most notably the pentagram, were in fact ancient symbols that have been adopted by the Freemasons. This blend of influences found expression in Gerald's collection of magical objects. Ooh, magical objects, ooh. Uh, if you didn't know, yes. So people are saying, wait, Churchill was a druid? Yeah, because in England, a lot of the upper crust uh, even the phony bishops, like the Archbishop of, the Archlayman of Canterbury, right? They are all also initiated into the Druidic order. People are always blown away when I show them this. Like, you didn't know this? This is old news, dude. What are you talking about? New Archbishop of Canterbury, Rowan Williams. This is from 2002, BBC 2002 was initiated into the Druidic order. There you go. So, yeah, the elite in the UK, and you're like, but why would they be Malthusians and want people to, to, to go depop? Uh, the, el the elites are nice people. They love us, even though they're Druids. Ugh. But to see some of these, you have to go to a rather unlikely location. Rave. We going to a 1993 rave, dude. That's a that's a Muzak version of Chemical Brothers. I've come here in pursuit of one of the most significant collections of Wiccan artifacts in the world, and among them is one of the most important Wiccan manuscripts. 
Why can't this man can this man unclose his nostrils? Every talk, every word he uses, he needs to unclog his nostrils. Can you do a nostril clogging, unclogging spell? Couldn't they whip up a drought for you to use in the neti pot? Can the witches not do their root working for the neti pot? The owner is John Bellum Payne, a property developer now living in Spain. Oh, everyone in this video is straight up beta male, gamma male cringe, aren't they? This is like the ultimate beta gamma cringe con con confederacy. Thank you. He is also one of Wicca's senior priests and in the great tradition of the faith has had many of Gerald's most prized magical possessions handed down to him. Wow. Can you talk me through? But he can't cure that bulbous handed gut. Down to him. Again, amazing. Look at the witch powers failed him. He's a high-ranking Spanish witch and he can't he can't pull that gut under he can't, I mean, even just lose about 20 pounds, right? Even just 20 pounds, dude. Then I will believe your magics. Wow. Can you talk me through some of Gerald's objects and explain what they were for? Okay, this was Gerald Gardner's wand, or at least one of them. And he would have used that to cast a circle. <laughs> the other item... Thank you for the flashback. I might not have remembered what happened five minutes ago, but... Now I know. Now I'm up to speed. Thank you. The here that we have from Gerald is one of his athames. What is um, an athame? It's a ritual knife. We only use an athame for magical purposes. Could the ritual knife remove the second chin, though? Oh, my. Obviously, uh... uh oh, my. Did you hear him? Yeah, this is a different type purposes. of object, right? Oh, my. Oh, oh my. <laughs> we'll skip that object. Oh my. <laughs> but the real prize is much too valuable to be kept in John's basement. Worth more than a million dollars, it's locked away in a much more secure location. Now I'm being granted a remarkable privilege. I'm about to see a Wiccan Holy Grail. What? No way! Here, in a secure vault in this bank, is one of the most significant and valuable religious documents. We're going to remove it. We're going to remove it from the deposit here. They're gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna get it out of the deposits. One I'm of the most significant and valuable religious documents of the 20th century. I'm going to remove it from the ATM. This is the foundation text, the closest thing to a Bible of modern pagan witchcraft. Which, girl, Gerald Gardner just made up. So remember, this is an original Bible for witchcraft from Gerald Gardner that he just made up. I reveal the secrets of the art. It's called the Book of Shadows. It's Gerald's own magical workbook. Dude, it's like we're it's like playing D and D, dude. His experimental notes for what Wicker would become. Here, I'm starting to feel like playing D and D which is LARPing, is like this. Gerald wrote down the original rituals and spells that Wiccans have been using ever since. It's a manual. But that he made up. And like Wicca itself, it remained a work in progress rather than a fixed set of doctrines. So, Ronald, this is it. This is Gerald Gardner's first and original Book of Shadows. First of all, it's probably the most famous book that there is in, in the craft. And as far as that is concerned, my take on this book is I think it's as important as, as owning the original Bible. Because it's... it's... <laughs> Wait, he wrote it on actual, like, lined paper? <laughs> Dude, if you're going to do a... I mean, imagine that the Bible was written on, like, a, in, on, in, a, in a binder, right? Like a three-ring binder. And Gerald Gardner didn't even, didn't even take enough time and effort to get i mean i went to barnes and noble and we saw a fake scroll manuscript with a leather cover that at least didn't have the red and blue lines across it come on dude full of just everything that gardner learned at that stage from a whole load of different sources 
It's literally literally just written on like a notepad. And look how he put he he, he didn't even do calligraphy, but he tried to like dress it up like <laughs> to make it look calli calligraphic. I mean that's that's lame, dude. First, draw a circle with athene and sprinkle with exorcised water. Light candles. And this is the important part, is this is a book of experiences. This is a book about things that have gone right and some things that have gone wrong. This is wonderful. It's certainly the oldest Wiccan book surviving in Europe. It's And it's written on, like, binder paper. Come on, dude. That's the lamest thing I've ever seen. I saw a nude priestess go, go wild. You always be naked at my right. And, of course... It's... Now, why is that? I mean, tell me this dude didn't look insane. Watch this game. Break. Gerald was invited to defend himself on Panorama. This would become a definitive TV moment watched by millions that gave the British public their first sight of a real live witch. Is it true that the dancing takes place, as a rule, naked? Yes. Now, why is that? It's the tradition. It's the order, the order of the goddess. Who you should always be naked at my right. And of course it's Look at them look at them crazy eyes. Like crazy eyes. Work magic. You must be naked. Gerald couldn't have hoped for a bigger audience. He's just old perv, dude, that's it. And even in the face of some provo He don't have magic powers, man, he's just an old perv. And the establishment is promoting it because they're a bunch of degenerates, that's it. It's not counterculture. And said no people shouldn't argue. Here we go. He, Plump chicks once again. It was, it was, it was great stuff, and he wanted, it, he wanted it to survive. He's the one who put it out there and said no people should know about this. This is amazing. Thank you very much. Uh, broomsticks, I think, are all waiting. You know, somebody was talking about the strategy of the Israeli soldiers and the IDF that they always put out their good-looking women to do their selfies and all and all the images of idf women everywhere they're always attractive did the witches not think about this i mean the, i mean the hollywood image of a witch is that they're attractive and babes right but in reality they're not they look horrible but why didn't they think to like find at least some attractive representatives of this religion because it, it doesn't matter whether it's gerald gardner who looks like a shriveled up old turtle man or the witches who look like everybody's aunt. Uh, it's just, it's just, I mean, if this has the power that it's supposed to have, then everybody should be looking like, you know, they should be Adonis and Venus or something. You know what I mean? And it'd be like a super fat dude trying to sell you weight loss. You know what I mean? It's like, come on. Through all this, Gerald got his wish. He had become Britain's first modern celebrity witch. It's like, it's like turning the crack. Now, we've been making jokes, but you got to understand the first celebrity witch was a big step in cultural engineering. Because now celebrity witches, right, like... Uh, who's the chick? From? Hermione, right? Remember Hermione from Harry Potter? She's actually a witch now. And she posted on her Instagram a few months ago her big story of her initiation process, right? So actual movie witches are becoming real witches. Is what I'm trying to say. And that's then Katy Perry and all of them, right? They're influencing the young girls to become witches, Abigail Breslin, she says she's a witch now. So all of these, like, you know, teenage pop star girls that are the new wave of them post Lady Gaga and Katy Perry, like, they're all into witchcraft too, right? You understand? So if you want to support the show, by the way, there's the Super Chat links. So I'm, I'm making fun of Gerald Gardner because it should be made fun of. But at the same time, to be the first celebrity witch like that, and that this is promoted by British intelligence and the British establishment tells you again, it's not counterculture, it's social engineering. Candle of an old car, you know, <laughs> nothing happens then. And then suddenly it sparks into life, you know, that, that's what happened. As Gardner's fame grew, so about Wicker. 
I had all these spiritual gifts and I didn't know what to do with them. And eventually I read a book by Joel Gardner, I think it was called Witchcraft Today. And I... Yeah, so Lonely Grandma uh, has, she decides, a ton of spiritual gifts. And then she read Joel Gardner and it told her that she was a witch. I mean, just ridiculous stuff. Let's see. Oh, the counterculture. Look, watch this. This is my point. Watch. I, the really weird thing is it works. Th these were the eyes of someone who had only one foot in the, wor in the world of the commonplace. I don't know how a guy gets into that state, I'm sure, but, but he, he got into it somehow. Wicker's emphasis on gender equality, nature worship, and sacred sexuality made it... So, feminism, egalitarianism, social engineering. Do you see what I'm saying? Perfect fit for the historical moment. It was almost as if... A perfect fit for the engineered 1960s cultural counterculture movement. Gerald had predicted how the world was about to change. He was a conduit for something that it was the right time for that to happen. Anyway, you guys get the point here, right? Oh, remember Wicker Man. Interesting. March into the mainstream helped to know accurate, glib, its eccentric leader for religion, his feminist, eco-friendly, magical faith has taken it. Feminist eco-friendly, even though he was just in the woods smacking the butts with switches of the women that he, the, the, the fat goth chicks like Sam Tripoli says, right? All right, so now you've all been initiated. You've all understood the mysteries. It's time to listen to the witches themselves. Tell us what's going on. Now we, we understand the depth. It was so deep. Remember that one guy said it was actually so deep out there with them wine moms and after the after the box wine in the Virginia Slim to go into the woods and spin around in a circle and play rosy posy. Uh, no, not rosy posy. What am I trying to think of? You know what I'm saying. Dan Hoedowns in the in the woods. A parrot? Hoedowns the hoes in the woods, right? All right, now we got to learn about from the astral witch here, and let's see. They always have, and I, I agree with Slow Boy that uh, these are inflated stats. There is no way that this dumb witch video got five hundred and forty-three thousand likes. I mean, come on. Witch Talk is freaking out because Kat Von D is throwing out her witchcraft books, and everyone's convinced that means witchcraft is going to be illegal now. <laughs> So because Kat Von D became an evangelical and threw away her witchcraft books, that means witchcraft is going to be made illegal. So remember, these people live in a completely different reality from, from reality. And that's where I'm going with today's discussion. As we're going to see, my, my theorizing, what you all come here for, my attempted wise analysis is going to be that this is ultimately, perhaps, a dissociation operation. Operation dissociation. What do I mean? You're going to see. Because all of the commonalities that we'll see with our witches and our evangelical goobers and our starseeds will be focused on the commonality between all these that what's going on in my head is the real reality that I can make happen in the external world, which is actually the real reality that I don't want to accept. So there's two realities. There's the real reality. And then there's the fake reality in my head that I believe and want to be reality, the delusion. And you're going to see that everybody's got the same one. Now, what is that called when that divorce between real reality in the external world and fake reality in the head, when it gets more and more and more severe? dissociation dissociating from reality and even perhaps into fractured personalities now i'm not saying that every dumb teenage witch is a fractured personality but you're starting to notice things coming along at the same time and going together right being confused about who you are and what you are uh that is synonymous with the rise of witchcraft and the rise of the new age starseed jibber jabber and the rise of this horrible evangelical 
prosperity gospel stuff. You see where I'm going with this? That's, that's I think, the ultimate danger. Not everybody who's an evangelical or a witch or a new ager is a dissociative. I'm not saying that. But if you read John Marx's book and if you read Daniel Estlin's book on Tavistock, they talk about the idea that they knew at Tavistock that the releasing of these cultural toxins would create a dissociative state in society precisely because it caused a dissociative state in the individuals. You see what I'm saying? And I would like to add my two cents because I have a lot to say. First of all, I don't know why any of you are... She, and we definitely need to listen to a 17-year-old witch on TikTok, right? She's got a lot to say. ...surprised by this because New Age spirituality is very often a pipeline to the alt-right. And then... Wait, what? <laughs> what? ...to the alt-right. And then eventuality what? is very often a pipeline to the alt-right. And... New Age spirituality is a pipeline to a failed political movement that doesn't exist anymore. Uh-huh. Sure. Yeah. So again, totally divorced from reality. No idea. What? And evangelical Christianity. It's not new. It happens literally all the time. And Kat Von D was already an anti-vaxxer and a racist. So it's really not a big <laughs> jump for her. Second of all. So you're a bad person because of the ideas that you have. But also... Bad and good are just manifestations of nature, just like male and female, according to Wicca, right? So Wicca, by the way, that's binary. Uh-oh, oops. So binary oppositions are just the patterns of nature, and good and evil are just manifestations of natural forces and processes. And the goddess balances out the masculine, right? Right? So wait a minute. On what basis is any of this wrong? The way you guys are saying this is going to be a new witch hunt is completely ignoring the actual history of the witch trials. Because it actually <laughs> wasn't witches who were being persecuted. It was just people of color and other marginalized communities. People of color. Wait, what? The Salem witch trials. People of color. Let's see. <laughs> victims <laughs> people of color so people are existing in completely different realities right i mean what so here are the supposed victims according to the googles uh don't see anybody that's of any colors I see a bunch of uh, white bread honky people. So, I mean, you see how people are living in alternate realities in their heads. You see what I mean? But I mean, this is this is funny. He's practicing their culture, and they are still being oppressed for doing that currently. Right. Pe being oppressed. People of color are being oppressed. Because they want to practice witchcraft. So the witch trials can't come back when they never actually stopped in the first place. Burned. It might drop. Booyah. All right. Where's I thought. Here we go. My top favorite three spells to use as a witch. Number What's one, your, number you need one. to protect your home. My favorite thing to do is to take a deep cleansing breath. And go, you got three seconds to get the fuck up out of here. And two Woo! Of them Tell it. Mm. Already gone because I can't count shit but money. Number two, got somebody in your sights and you want to make a love connection. Mm -hmm. My favorite thing to do is to make eye contact. And once they look at me, I roll my eyes, look away, and ignore them for the rest of the night. Why have a stranger when you could have a stalker? Last but not least, number three. Need I actually agree with that. Tell it, girl. Need to set a really hard boundary with somebody that you care about. I want you to conjure up Talk every possible hand. fuck that you can give. Shut. Talk to the nails. Shove it up your motherfucking shenugula flute, and then look them dead in their eyes and go fuck you, bitch. I ain't like you like that, anyways. Mm, tell it. That's that's what that's wisdom right there. Wisdom, baby. Wisdom. Which tips that every witch should know? If there is someone in your house and you really want them to leave, take your broom, flip it upside down. 
They will leave. I fucking. These chicks, uh, again, are not making use of the weight loss spells. Where are the weight loss? Where is, you know, you could even get a familiar spirit that's just a little trainer. Just a little trainer on your soldier. It's your shoulder. Because we all know witches are trying to get familiar spirits, but they never get one that's a personal trainer. Why? They'll leave. If there's someone in your life who won't quit talking shit about you, take... Okay. Some of you new age practitioners are going to get your ass beat by your ancestors. Boom. Us old school practitioners have a saying, you don't... What, she's... Why is she doing this to every word? You can just talk. You don't have to do it to every word. Throw the baby out with the bath water. I'm going to keep these witches Today, away. I just a video about how Vicks is used for spiritual protection. Vicks? And not only for colds and cough in the Caribbean and Latin households. Vicks? So you got uh, Monsanto, Cor Gillette corporate products that are used for rituals. About to go get my cold gate and put a little spell on you. Person writes on my Instagram, but Vix is petroleum jelly, which is a byproduct of the oil industry and is made from the uh, exactly leftover petroleum materials of oil and gas production. I gotta hear the rebuttal of this because that savvy commenter had the exact thought that I had. Am I gonna get which BTFO? Let's find out. That cell phone in your hand has far more toxins and does so much more cell damage than this little bottle of Vicks will do in your whole lifetime. Oh. You don't go touch grass and just shut oh. up. Oh, I got on, dude. My even my sandalwood couldn't couldn't fend off that magical logic right there. I just got owned. Clip that. Clip that. Exposed. Thanks. That just makes sense in my witchy house. Doorways are a portal and can collect a lot of unwanted energy. To keep my space free and clear, I give them a good moon water bath, and then you'll find selenite sticks and tourmaline pieces on every- I don't want to know what bodily fluids is in the moon water, so let's just- no. If you're a beginner witch, here's some advice I wish someone told me before I started- I'm burning this to keep the witches away, because they see this, they see me exposing them, they're going to cast evil spells on me. So I got to fight back. You know what I'm saying? I got to burn the sandalwood to keep them away. So now we're going to learn the mysteries right here, how to, how they started out. This is the, this is the girl who originally debunked everything because the witch trials never stopped, son. Did you not hear about the witch trials under Ronnie Reagan? That's because you're a racist. Practicing. Number one, you do not need to spend all of your money on supplies or buy all these fancy tools you see online. You can practice witchcraft with just some herbs and candles. Uh, garbage and dirt. Exactly. That's what I've been saying. Witchcraft is for lazy people that don't take out the trash and they're hoarders. So they're just coming up with creative ways to say, hey, I got this old chamber pot. Uh, it's a magical chamber pot and I'm going to sell it on the witch racket. Right? From the dollar store. But your intention and personal power is literally all you need. It doesn't have to be aesthetically pleasing or. So I don't have to get Eye of Newt. I don't have to get those real ingredients. Where's the authentic witches getting freaking beaver piss and getting Eye of Newt and getting Testicle of Frog, right? I mean, that's authentic witchcraft. When I see you doing that and not getting a, a, a bunch of, I don't know, lavender from the from hobby lobby i'll take you serious complicated to work number two spells can backfire but not in the way that you might think the best example of this that i've seen is that time someone did a spell to attract their soulmate on so you literally just putting out stuff from freaking dollar store right i mean that's a dollar store that's a bed bath and beyond pumpkin candle right there and it smells like pumpkin spice we all know that and so I thought witchcraft, I thought I'd have to invest. You know, I thought I was going to have to get an altar. I thought I was going to have to send off to Estonia to get the eye of the newt. But now you just go to the dollar store now. 
here, but they ended up finding a stray cat instead. Now, obviously that's not a bad thing, but it just goes to show that you need to be very clear and specific with your intentions because you might get what you want just in a different way than you expected. And lastly, don't- Well, maybe that's why the weight loss spells are not working, right? Feel pressure to become the most advanced witch super quickly and practice every single day. Witchcraft is not a race, there's no rush, and it's important to remember that you still have a regular non-magical- Because there's always a spell that you can do to pause your aging or to look younger, right? I mean, that also, isn't that part of it or not? But how come they're not doing that? A life to experience too. So if you only have time to practice on special occasions, or all you do is basic spells like protection and cleansing, or just fooling around with a candle from dollar store, that's okay, and you are still just as valid of a witch as anyone else. Affirm yourself. You're a beginner witch, here's- Dang, look at that witch store, dude. That's- That's a high-grade peddler's mall right there. Uh, who are you talking to? Can't I just argue with people? Once again, the witches are portly, aren't they? Five signs that you're in a witch house. Uh, trash and hoarding everywhere. Smells like pee. Okay, where's the sign? We saw that last time. We saw that last time. Think it's we saw that last time. Here is a quick and easy witch uh -oh. kit. Whenever someone's thanking you. So here's the first one that's at least attractive if she didn't have all that goop all over her face. Something. Never say you're welcome. Always say it's okay or anything like that. Just because as you're saying you're welcome, you're technically inviting that person into your life. And this is old vampire rules. We, the, this is everybody knows this about vampires. So what are you talking about witches? It's a quick and easy witch tip. Whenever someone's thanking you for something, never say you're welcome. Always so never say you're welcome because that's like inviting Dracula over the threshold. Say it's okay. That's some wisdom right there, dude. Deep wisdom. Why would you read the book of Proverbs when you've got that kind of wisdom drip coming out on the regular? Okay, or anything like that. Just because as you're saying you're welcome, you're technically inviting that person into your life. And you don't know their true intentions. So every time I say you're welcome, I am inviting the person into my life. Even at the checkout counter. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, it's kind of, it seems starting to sound superstitious. And superstition seems to place man at the behest of forces outside of himself and her, herself and her himself. But that would be to enslave me. I thought I was getting liberated in witchcraft. But now I feel like I'm getting enslaved to superstitions and that I'm not using my reasoning faculty. This is a jar of dirt. Yes. We saw them last Intuition time. Intuition test. What color is the candle? All right, so we're going to test everybody's witch intuition to see who has the bloodline powers. Are you a muggle or are you house uh, Slytherin? Or are you house uh, Jibby Jabby? I'm going to say it's red. Okay, we know. Come on, what is it? Ready. Yes. Oh, bro. I've, I'm y'all are muggles. I'm sorry. I'm over here at Hogwarts right now. I'm at Hogwarts. Y'all are over there hanging hanging out with Harry's fat stepdaddy or whatever. And I'm over here at Hogwarts. Bunch of muggles. <laughs> My chat's a bunch of muggles. Look at that. We're basically initiated over here. All right, I'm 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 getting a little witched out. I'm I about had enough of witch talk. We not we might need to move over into uh, raising our vibrational consciousness away from the initiation of the witches. Maybe we need to get over here with the star seeds. What do y'all think? Witches or stars? I mean, they're both pretty good. Intuition test. We saw her last I'm time. The... I don't want to play the music. I'm the... the songs all trade. Okay. Pour some salt. All right, we saw all these last time, so we're going to move on to the star seeds. Uh, we also got the evangelical goobers as well, but uh, let's see. How do we know if we're these a star These are seven seed? major signs that you were born a star seed. Did Kotel play this one? 
I can't remember because I don't really I want to play different ones, but when you type in this when you type in Star Seed, it's like the same ones come up for everybody. So what's this dude? Probably got a million views. Fifty two thousand likes. Come on. All right, seven signs that you're a star seed, right? Uh, we already now listen, audience. It's not over for you. It's not. A, most of you are are vibrating at a low frequency. You're down on the astral chart sphere. You're down at the bottom. So you're not a witch. So, but there's not. There's hope for you, muggles. Because you might be a star seed. Okay, you're not witches, but you might be a star seed. So. Let's see the seven signs and find out who in the audience is a star seed. On this planet, number one is a strong sense of being different or not belonging on Earth. Everybody on Earth is different from the other persons. So potentially then we are all star seeds. We're made of star stuff. We're made of star stuff. Remember what? What's his name? I want to play that, but it also dings the algorithm. It's so annoying. Billions and billions, right? What's his name? I just went blank. Remember that stupid song that we always that I love to play? Symphony of Science, right? We're all made of star stuff. So if we're all made of star stuff, then we're all we are we all pass number one. You may feel that no one truly understands you, and that your real home lies within the stars. Number lies out there or within the stars because if my home lies within the stars i'm gonna get cooked up i'm gonna get cooked does your do you does your home lie within the stars Number two is a strong sense of an unfulfilled purpose you feel within your soul a deep sense of wanting to complete a long-awaited task Number so I think pretty much everybody at some point in their lives feels a lack of purpose, but then most of the people in, but wait a minute. So if I do have a purpose, which is to be a star seed, if I feel like I am a star seed, then I don't have the one where I, I won't have this criteria of lacking purpose. So I feel now I'm contradicting myself because what if I am a star seed, but I don't feel the lack of purpose, but lack of purpose is a sign of being a star seed. <laughs> Number three is if you experience the deep spiritual awakening. And this well, how do I know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing or what exactly it means, right? So they, they always put the primacy of experience by which they typically mean like emotions or emotionalism, right? That's always put above the idea of making sense of things, being coherent and not contradicting basically. Right. So they think that embracing contradictions, which by the way, is the first step towards dissociation. And this is actually in uh, 1984, by the way, remember, I, so I was thinking of, right. So we saw dissociation. It's mentioned by Huxley in the John Marx book. It's mentioned by Daniel Estelin and uh, Tavistock and, uh, it's mentioned by John Coleman in Committee 300 that Tavistock would do mass dissociation. And I forgot, it's also in 1984 because the double think that is going on in 1984 for Winston, right? That's also the double think that he calls a double bind, which is intended to ultimately divide the individual because part of the individual is, is rational and is thinking in a, in a rational way. The other part of the individual is thinking in a contradictory way to the rational side of the person. And this is producing two people. Now, not everybody is that sufficiently advanced in that contradiction to the point of being full on dissociative, right? That's, I don't know how many people in society are actually dissociative, but I'm starting to believe that all of the mass uh, drugging and all of this kind of stuff and all the toxic culture and basically just demonic stuff everywhere is actually furthering. I think more and more and more and more people are actually experiencing dissociation. That's what I think. And awareness has allowed you to come to a deeper understanding of the universe and your purpose in the stars. Number four is your intuition is strong. You have a clear. But wait a minute. Uh, if my intuition is strong, 
then it would tell me about contradictions between feeling purposelessness, but also feeling the purpose of being a starseed. Your understanding of topics that have never been introduced to you and can very easily see other people's. Oh, so wait a minute. My intuition can tell me, <laughs> give me a clear understanding of abstract topics. Uh, and I see people's intentions right away. So wait a minute. That would require me following my logical faculty, right? To be able to understand abstract topics means that you have a highly functioning, rational mind, right? But this guy saying, no, actually intuition is above that. Yeah, but this is why it's really important. We're told that the heart is deceptive above all else. Who can know it in Jeremiah, right? Because we can deceive ourselves. Our feelings can deceive us and mislead us, you see. That's why these are garbage signs of absolutely nothing. Intentions. Number five is you're a highly sensitive and empathic person. You in other words, you're emotional. So you're like a beta, right? Now, I'm not saying that all emotions are bad or that you can't have empathy. You should have empathy. It's, it's, un, it's not human and normal. It's not normal to have no empathy. But to be ruled by your feelings is a surrendering of your rational faculty. And if you live that way, you will not live according to actual reality. You will live according to your fantasy, which will damage you in life. Naturally connect with people on a very emotional level and can sense the solution to their personal problems. Six is feeling like an old soul who's been here before. Feeling that your true purpose is to embody the wisdom you've gathered over- I thought I was purposelessness. So if I have purposelessness, as a sign of being a star seed. But now one of the signs is that I know my true purpose is to embody the wisdom in my past lives. How many lifetimes walking this earth? Number seven is babies, children, and animals are naturally drawn to you. This is. <laughs> I like how this picture has uh a giant orangutan <laughs> looking over the shoulder of the guy. Due to the powerful vibration. Is it, I mean, all, is it all of these? Like, or any, like one animal or like the whole, all of the animal, right? Like every animal or like just the snail and the skunk? Like what qualifies as the animals being drawn to me? Because sometimes a cat doesn't like me. A dog barks. How do I know? And that your soul naturally carries. These are seven major signs that you were born. A so, yeah, I'm not, I'm starting to think that, um, none of us actually makes it to star seed status because the criteria of being a star seed is all a bunch of contradictory nonsense. We need to talk about star seeds. So I don't ever really do this, but I would appreciate it if you could share this video with other witches that she on that reservation, right? And she's the witches are worried about the star seed. So we're about to see a, uh, we're about to see a consciousness battle where the star seeds are going to project their positive vibes at the witches and the witches are going to have a binding spell to ward off the consciousness vibes. Who will win? You know, because this is something that we really need to talk about. And that is I've been taught it's time to have this conversation, right? You know, Sammy the Bull, he has a sit down. It's time to have a, a sit down conversation. I've been telling the witches and the star seeds for years you know, it's like Israel, Palestine. It's like, you know, Colombo Gambino. It's time to have a sit down and we got to talk this out. How star seeds are tied to eugenics, anti Semitism, race supremacy, and Nazi Germany. So the star seed. Which is coming with that conspiracy talk. Wait a minute. I thought conspiracies. She's actually kind of uh, correct about some of that, by the way. So you know you're a star seed. How do I know, girl? Do you know what kind of star seed no. you are? No. Let me know. This is really, really important mm -hmm. because once you understand, am I broken? Or contract as a star seed, and yes, a contract. There is such a thing as a star. I didn't sign no contract. Contract. I ain't under contract. I'm a free agent, girl. Star seed contract. You have a very specific. Mission. Why am I under contract? I don't even know about it. Damn. I'm going to have to get me a spirit agent, a spirit lawyer to draw up my new starseed contract. 
on this planet at this time. Mm. But when we incarnate onto the earthly plane, we go through a veil of forgetfulness. This is a part of the way the system works to disempower us. Girl, that's what Plato said. Remember who we are. Mm. We're much easier to be controlled. Shout out to Plato, baby. Right? Yes. So with that being said, if you know that you're a star seed or a light worker and that you're here to have a very specific mission at this time, you know you're here to help people. But wait a minute. I just thought being purposelessness was a sign of being a star seed. But now I know I have a certain mission. We need to talk. I'm so confused. Maybe that's because I got a bad spirit agent that put me under a damn spirit contract that I didn't want. We're talking about the indigo children and i've told you guys that i'm an indigo some of you are indigo we're part of this you would say it's a little right, so now uh none of us qualified as star seeds however don't worry audience i know the purposelessness that you feel i understand it you feel like me very purposelessness right now except i'm at hogwarts and y'all are muggles but uh there's still hope because you might be an indigo child race because all the races that come out of blue flame that's where the indigos are coming from oh that's our dude that we saw last time that's the boy i was talking about that's our bro right flame. here with that gas station shirt he's got he, he, he used to have a, a a tiger gas station shirt now he's got just a straight up tie dye but this is my boy right here because he's got the chart he's got a helpful chart that lets you know what frequency you're vibrating at right now that's where the indigos are coming from the blue flame. right here that's the chart see what i'm saying we need more of this to be helpful. So look, God is outside of the universe and he's expanded beyond the time matrix. We live in the particle universe, but it has many levels, you see. First level is the cosmic ecactic mind. That's Eka. The next level of sound is the Risha'a, polaric cosmic mind level, as you all know already. The third level is the geomantic cosmic mind level, as you all know. And so if you come down to that middle circle, that's the blue flame. And that's where the indigo children resonate from with. This is part of our drama, even from the high levels, not just our level, not just our... Right, see that right there? The blue flame, that's the emerald order of the royal house of Arkamatana. Okay. We're talking straight up Dune Harkonnen level shit right here, right? We're talking Paul Atreides. We're talking the Akamanakata. We're talking the Kwisatz Haderach, okay? How can this be? Because he is the Kwisatz Haderach. <laughs> Alia keeps pace with the storm. Understanding, but a greater level, a greater energy, a greater connection. That indigos are heart human, they're yes. part extraterrestrial, so they're, you would say, hybrids, but a positive hybrids because we uh, represent yeah. the law of one. Duh. Talk about indigo children, it's, it's definitely uh, duh, dude. Come on, like a spiritual topic. Tell me of something I don't know. It's a spiritual war, and you specifically, indigo holy ones, are representing life, you're representing the law of one. There's families of indigos in a specific gene pool. We are yep. coming from this right. people, even the Christ, you would say Jesus, Jeshua, we call him, is one that came from these people. And you would say, this is coming through the line of King Solomon, but not from the same information, okay, from the Bible, and no disrespect to any religion. We love all, we don't judge. That's actually what... Well, wait a minute, you just were talking about the people that you're against so wait a minute so are they are all are all one or are you criticizing the people that are not going along with all is one law of one is no judgment instead unity no judgment but you just said that some people don't believe in the law of one so that's a judgment they're very curious three rappers that you may not know wait ah oh, what the freaking rappers are starseeds, and I didn't even know this? Dude. All right, which three rappers are the starseeds? That's the first question. So, number one, Curtis Blow, right? It's got to be Curtis Blow, right? One of the earliest rappers, Curtis Blow. Curtis Blow got that flow. It always goes like this, right? Definite starseed. Uh, let's see. Who's my second pick for Starseed amongst rappers? Um, Eric B. and Rakim. They are both 
star seeds, but they count as one because it's mystical. It don't have to make sense. So we got Eric B and Rakim. They'll sweat the technique. We got Curtis Blow. And then I got um, one more rapper that I think is a star seed. It's not Kanye. Nope, it's not Will Smith. Everybody's naming old rappers. Old rappers like me right here. Um, uh, Lil Xan. <laughs> I threw y'all. I threw y'all for a loop. You thought I was going to say somebody old. No, Lil Xan is a star seed. All star seeds. Firstly, we have the beautiful. Uh, the beautiful Mac Miller is a star seed. Okay, did not know that. Don't even know any Mac Miller songs. Well, Mac Miller, who is a Mentalkin star seed, very a Mentalkin star seed. Ah, yes. Not to be confused with all of the other degrees of star seed. Full of light, very resilient, very heartland, very high vibration. Heartland, exactly. Vibrational, almost too much for this earthly plane. Dude, I mean. Yeah, I mean, if he if he felt any more than he already feels, he would be Marty, like Marty McFly fading out of here in that Polaroid from from 1984, right? Remember, remember Marty McFly fading out. If Mac Miller felt any more than he already does, he would fade. Now you got this sister over here saying men are not even star seeds, so. We got a little bit of friction, a little bit of dogmatic disagreement in the comment section from the other Starseed ladies. But remember, all is one. So our friend here is not even actually in reality disagreeing because all is one. Now, who's another rapper that's a Starseed? Let's see if I got any of them right. His soul also took over from another soul, so he's actually a clearly, walk-in, which means that they can have trouble kind of fitting into that incarnation and feeling yeah, very... It, that's, it comes with the territory, yeah. That's true. That's true. ...connected to it. Tyler, the creator, is indeed... Oh, dude, Tyler, totally Tyler. Obviously, Tyler, the creator, who doesn't he say he's a Satanist? I can never tell if he's really a Satanist or if he's just playing on the meme, uh, but clearly a starseed. I mean, star seed there's really no question about that, right? Main energies are Nihal, Nihal and Syrian. Syrian Nihal is exactly. the rainbow, the yeah. indigo, the crystal children who come to create change. They're very rebellious. And the Syrian in him gives him this creative mm. energy. J. Cole is totally. Arcturian and Pleiadian. The Arcturian gives him this... Uh, I don't even know these rappers. I mean, actually, I do. I know, I know the first two, but who in the heck is this dude? J. Cole. J. Cole is... Pleiadian. I should have known a Pleiadian, but. Star seat. George Norrie's going to ask, what's a star seat? Hey, folks. Coast to coast with George Norrie. What's a star seat? What's a star seat? Come on, tell me. Did the internet go out? What's going on? Come on now. Daily reminder that star seeds are an ableist conspiracy theory. Wait, what? Wait, star seeds, not a CIA conspiracy. It's an ableist conspiracy. Whoa, what? Designed to explain away autistic people by saying that we have the souls of aliens. Stop saying you're a star seed. It's ableist. Daily reminder. Oh, my mind just got blown, dude. Star seeds are uh, individuals that are having a human experience here on Earth. They're choosing to have Sounds a human like incarnation, Ike. but their souls originated from other star si star systems, other dimensions, and other realities. Are they physically human? Yes, totally. Yes, star seeds are mm. uh, helpful. Helpful. Three of the rarest starseeds to populate the earth right now that I've mm. seen in my work and I've channeled. Firstly, we have a lot of single moms. A lot of single moms in this sphere. I've noticed uh, the star seeds is populated by a lot of single moms. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Giants in the military. I'm literally almost crying right now. No, <laughs> don't cry. Well, we don't need to see your kids. Line number one, impatience. Star seeds often come from worlds that are... She looks like that chick that was in a horror movie we just watched the other night. Is that her? 
Fight number one, impatience. Star seeds, okay. often. This one I got. I got it. Good luck for we there's a good chance that we may make the cut. Everybody wants to try out. They want to be on the varsity star seed team. All of us do. We want to be on the varsity cut, right? Well, guess what? Are you impatient? That's number one sign you're a star seed. And come from worlds that are higher dimensional than Earth. Again, this is a large overgeneralization. Oh Some star seed. Some star seed. We come from an iron dimension. So, how do we know that the dimensional vibrations there are higher than here? Maybe they are. I'm very open to that because we got a lot of low vibrations going on here in Earth, right over here on Earth. But how do I know that? And what does it mean that you channeled it? Because, I mean, maybe you're just sitting there closing your eyes, jibber-jabbering. I am channeling um, Bobby Nine from the 14th consciousness level of the Pleiadian universe. Bobby Nine says, give me $5 in the super chats right now. What would you like to know from Bobby Nine? See, see what I'm saying? Like, I could do what you're doing. But I got I, I got bad news for you. There's no such thing as Bobby Nine. I just made him up. And we got half of this audience right here, right? Half of this audience just now believed. Just now believed that Bobby Nine was real. I'm about to get exposed as being a channeler. Look at look at him. We exposed his channeler. He's channeling a demon called Bobby Nine from the Pleiades. Expose him, dude love other third dimensional planets but as a general rule a lot of star seeds that come here are fifth dimension and up exactly exactly if you understood the charts this makes perfect sense right i'm gonna get quickbooks out basically we need quickbooks to set up how this shit works with the with the dimensional frequency vibrations i mean on the one hand all is one but also you're vibrating at a low frequency and you're also a piece of crap so, but how, but if all is one, why am I still a piece of crap? Why am I still vibrating low? <laughs> get low, get low, right? Things move a lot faster in those worlds. Manifestation is faster. You are able to build things faster, make things faster, create things makes faster. things faster, run faster, talk right. faster. And um, everything's faster in those worlds because we live in a slow world, but also, also all is one. So actually, slow and faster aren't even a thing because all is one. And time time moves faster, yes. right? So when totally. you come here, A, you have to, as a star seat, you have to get used to the timeline and the time. Just you got it because you're impatient because shit's running slow. I'm at the DMV. I'm realizing I'm a star seat. I'm in line in the traffic. It's because I'm a star seat. People say in the chat, Jay, you're mean. Why are you mean to people? Stop being mean. Because I'm a starseed. And y'all a bunch of slow boys. Remember me calling y'all slow boys? I was gradually initiating you into the mysteries of starseed reality, which y'all don't understand because I'm used to, in every action, going 500 miles an hour. I, don't, I mean, my mind and my body, when I was on the Pleiade world in my past life, I was always running at and doing everything at 500 miles per hour. And here on Earth, for humans, everything is typically at about seven miles per hour, perhaps five. Because most people are slow and, and they're not smart. And so they're, they're, only at, they're only going at five miles per hour. I am usually going 500 miles per hour. When I pee, 500 miles per hour. When I walk to the... Grocery store, 500 miles per hour. When I eat dinner, 500 miles per hour. That's what I'm used to. So I don't understand you slow people. It's like that episode of Star Trek Next Generation when all they hear is uh, what they think is a bunch of mosquitoes. But it's because everybody else is in a different dimension, frequency, going 500 miles an hour faster than everybody else. Now you understand me, and now you can no longer call me mean. I'm just from a higher dimension space reality of planet earth which may be in and of itself quite complicated but really the number one thing that all star seeds have 
have to get used to yes. is the fact that Earth moves very, very slow. Uh, by number one, I'm starting to be convinced of this. This is this is, this is what I'm. This is talking. This is J talk right here. I like this. This is this is nice. Your blood type is O positive, O negative, or A positive, A mm -hmm. negative. You have a unique birthmark, clumsy, and. So now it's my blood type that tells me if I am a starseed. Your blood type. Is Cause you're an angel. You're a holy star seed. You're one of these Christed ones. You're one of these beings who come down. That's my that's my gas station uh, tiger shirt. Christed right ones. There. You're one of these beings. Look at that shirt. Damn boy. Uh, this dude looks like this dude looks like if Alex Gray threw up. You know what I mean? Like that's what we got going on with this. Who come down, make a contract, got permission, and came in. Hello. We're here. You have a mission. You have a covenant. Light worker. Call yourself a light worker. It means you follow light. You're an empath. You're being who's psychic. Uh, you have some of you have. Yeah, totally. What is Show this to your child to see if they understand this light language. Kroskonyana sakia kuata, dela liuna prakia puosete, te kingure tinja oka. I totally understood all that, but I can't repeat it to y'all what she just said to me because it's not. It's, it's just too much. And how dare her speak to that. This know. message will activate only those who are ready to I'm hear ready. it. I'm ready. Give it to me. It's those no people. accident that you found your way here after all this time. Exactly. About time somebody you realized. You must have seen the signs. I, I did, you. yes. I was purposelessness. In both your waking. I was purposelessness, as we saw. I also intuited. Also, I'm fast. 500 miles per hour. Dreaming states. Yes. You may have known for a while now that this was coming. Correct. I knew that. Oh, yes. Forever. Because this My moment past was destined since before your Yeah, birth. because of past lives and I'm fast. Before really fast. you were human. Before time existed. Yes. So please stay only if you're ready. <sighs> but for I'm from the fast dimension and you're going too slow. So if I'm going to understand my mission it needs to be sped up in the speed of what i'm used to this is too slow all right that's the last of all of them uh, i think we're done with these so um it looks like we're more so probably in our audience uh we probably split between muggles star seeds and witches so y'all gotta have to kick it up you're just not we're not doing it today, y'all. We're just not, we're not there, right? We're not vibrating where I need y'all to be vibrating, right? Right? If you would hit like and share. <clears throat> Let's look at a couple super chats. We got to get to the evangelical magic too. Guess what? There's magic in the evangelical world as well. We're going to look at here in a minute with these sweet boys over here on TikTok. Big seven footer for five dollars. Is there a downside to using energy crystals and healing crystals at the same time? Yes. The downside is that they're gonna cancel each other out, right? That's like if you put a star seed in the same room as a witch, it's just gonna be a a spirit battle going back to the past lives. You don't want to bring all that past life energy into your room. Likewise, an energy crystal and a healing crystal is basically just going to cancel each other out. Petricor, $5. Jay, I was a poo-poo agnostic pagan for 10 years after I left the Protestant church. Thank you for being a part of rediscovering God and what church is. Blessed forever in Christ. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Petricor, because agnostic paganism, first of all, that's a funny phrase. Agnostic pagan. That tells us a lot about the pagans. But we've had multiple pagan debates over the years, haven't we? And we pr we've we seen pretty consistently that <clears throat> paganism is pretty much just atheism wearing a bunch of costumes, right? It's, uh, it's like Dungeons and Dragons religion. I'm an atheist, but I also want to wear my Halloween costume all the time, all year round. Yukon 90210, $7. Thank you so much, Yukon. Travis. Just Travis. Hocus Pocus, these hoes are the jokers. Huzzah, I like that. That's our first spell of the day. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to light up some sandalwood in honor of you, Travis. 
So we got our first little entrant into Hogwarts in the chat there. Travis. He did a little hocus pocus uh, jibber jabber there. DC Woodwork at $3 says nothing. So probably not a star seed. Probably, uh, what do we see? What do we give DC? Uh, is DC a muggle, a star seed, or a witch? You be the judge. Bumblebee. Three, ten dollars. You are on fire tonight. No, my friend, the sandalwood is on fire, and that is to ward off these witch bitches when they come at me. I cried laughing at all of your nude soccer jokes, except that wasn't a joke. You saw that that old goober goon actually did play nude soccer. And you're over here laughing. Tragedy Pants, $5. I could not dono. This is just so freaking funny. I could not not, I couldn't not don donate. This is so freaking funny. Well, thank you. That's what I like to hear. And uh, may you be uh, blessed in your super chats. Remember, last time we did the witch talk, we saw that the witches believe in uh, blessings and planting a seed just like Kenneth Copeland. So if you plant a seed, a.k.a. give me money, a super chat, it returns to you tenfold, she said. Remember that? That one witch said that you are assured of tenfold coming back. Well, where are the super chats? Because if we got any witches, that's why I'm saying y'all are muggles. Y'all are muggles. Because if you were witches, you would know the law of ten, and you would be giving me the super chats to get tenfold back. So look at that. Tragedy Pants, $5. He's getting 50 back. According to the laws of the universe. Not for me. So don't misunderstand. I'm not saying I'm not giving you 50. I'm not giving you. Know, the universe. Universe. This universe. Universe. Is giving you back. Tempo. Cyprian, $20. Regarding your comments about mental reality clashing with actual reality. There's a book called Healing Com Humanity Confronting the Moral Crisis that you got in a monastery. And it deals with essays about transformers and Gnostics. You recommend it. Thank you, Cyprian. I'll have to check out that book. We're going to look, though, at a <clears throat> in a minute here when we look at dissociation. And I think you'll see what I'm saying. I think you'll see my point. BMX, 1966, longtime super chatter. Thank you so much. Sends $15 and says nothing. Kristen, $20. Thank you for that fat super chat. This is for the Eye of Newt, Beaver Urine, and the Frog Testicles. You need to buy these. Witchcraft is expensive. Yes, authentic witchcraft means buying a bunch of nasty things from Estonia. And Kristen understands that. So we got at least one non-muggle in the audience. Shout out to non-muggle Kristen. Storm the Cat, $10. That was Star Trek, the original series, not TNG. No. Uh, that is in the original series. There is also a Next Generation episode, I'm pretty sure, where they just reuse that plot. I'm like 90% sure. Because believe it or not, I, I when I was in 8th grade, every day I would come home and I would watch Next Generation. Because it was uh, all it was on was like Network and Fox. So the three networks and Fox. When I came home from basketball practice in 6th grade, 7th grade and 8th grade, I watched Star Trek Next Generation every day. But maybe you're right. Maybe I'm mixing up. I do know that there is the old Star Trek had an episode like that. But I want to think that they reused that under Jean-Luc Picard. Engage. Bone Man, $20. Law of 10 and the ninth density coom pod. Exactly. Now that's a person who understands vibrational consciousness. That's what I'm talking about. So we got at least one star seed and at least one non-muggle in the crowd. Thank you guys tonight. Uh, a couple people have put in their, their Law of 10 star seed. So they understand what's going on. Yeah, I'm hesitant. Now I know that Kotel played this, but I want to comment on it because we're going to start to notice that 
the witches and the new agers, just like Kotel said, they got a lot of the same presuppositions. But not just that, witches, star seeds, evangelical magical thinkers, two different realities going on. Now, so what's his name? Uh, Freaking Jesse Je Duplantis. Jesse Duplantis. Jesse Duplantis has a Daytona Leopard Rolex that's one hundred and fourteen thousand dollars. His second house cost him eighty thousand, and the Rolex cost one hundred and fourteen thousand. Now, that's two different realities. <laughs> Anybody who goes to this church is dumb. Like that's all I can, that's all I can say. If you go to Jesse Duplantis' church, which I think a lot of people go to these churches for every other reason but what's true. I mean, that's it's got to be right. I don't want to say I'm gonna get all kind of crazy. Let people fight. You'll have jewelry cost more in your house. Well, I'm telling you, listen to me. I'm 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 telling you. My first house cost fourteen thousand seven hundred dollars. I'm giving you a chance to write your check out. Fourteen thousand seven. My second house cost eighty-one thousand nine hundred dollars, and this watch costs more than that. Mm. <laughs> Are you gonna write me another letter? Mm. Let me tell you what. No, no. <laughs> I can really give you. Some. I, I don't mean that pridefully. Yeah, I'm hesitating. To say I don't want to say. I don't mean it pridefully, but I've got a hundred thousand dollar watch. I mean. The power of God was in Jesus. The healing power of God. The restoring power of God. This dude looks look like a Muslim. A Muslim uh, evangelical. The same power that made demons flee was in Nazareth, but Jesus could not release it because it was trapped in their unbelief. And there's one thing that even Jesus can't do. One thing that even the Son of God can't do. Even Jesus cannot override your unbelief. Mm. 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 Now I'm going to say something. I'm going to just load it out there. Just take it and receive it and put it in your spirit and let your spirit. Mm. This Bishop Sand Bling. Bishop Sand Bling. Oh, Bishops and Bling. I, was, I thought that was his name. Bishop Sand Bling. <laughs> I mean, you got Creflo Dollar, right? So why wouldn't a preacher be called Bishop Sand Bling? That's what I'm talking about. Handle it from there on. When I get, uh, when I when I become a Power bishop, of God. when I become a bishop, I'm gonna say, well, there. So, what name do you take, Bishop Sand Bling, Bling Bling? I'm gonna say something. I'm gonna just load it out there. Just take it and receive it, okay. and put it in your spirit. Okay. And let your spirit handle okay. it from there on. Okay. Every believer mm. could and should be a millionaire. Damn. Just let you, just let you, just let you, just let your spirit that, that, just handle it. Don't, don't try about. to fight it. Don't try to fight it. I, I, ain't got, gonna, I, I promise I ain't going to fight it. Let, let it happen. I got more knowledge in this area than you do. <laughs> now I'm going to say. Well, these TV preachers, wow. Well, they wilding. Wow. I have some friends of mine. They, they don't wear their jewelry when they're ministering. They look <clears throat> might hurt the offering. Not Jesse, boy. Suit, I'm king dude, of bling. You understand what I'm saying? I like that. I, 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 uh, my dream has now come to pass. Mm -hmm. I've been believing a long God. Ladies and gentlemen, I now own a Falcon 7X. This reminds me of Osho. Remember remember Osho? And remember, uh, uh, what's what's her name? Osho's, uh, Osho's woman, handler woman. Remember him? Her? <clears throat> What's her name? Tina? Deborah? Remember that? Uh, let me see if I can find. What's what's her name? I'm going I'm going blank. <clears throat> it's like a boomer name, like Tina or, or Deborah. And it's when Osho is on uh Sheila. That's it. Thank you. I knew it was a boomer name. You don't ever see a you're not gonna see a a zennial named Deborah or Tina or Sheila, right? Sheila's a mom or an aunt, a boomer mom or an aunt. That's it. There's, there's no, no Sheila. Anybody under 30 is not named Sheila. Mm -hmm. Osho, Sheila. 
And then it's the interview where they're talking about the Rolls Royces. That's the best part, right? Because is it Donahue? Donahue says, how many Rolls Royces you got? And Sheila goes, 14, and by Tuesday, it will be 15. And then somebody says, that's not right. And she says, tough titties. <laughs> tough titties. Information. Into a commodity. I mean, let's be well, what, one of your former and Raj, logical about it. One of your f former Rajneeshis in Sydney alleges that uh, prostitution was one of the ways that uh, your group raised money. That former Rajneeshi profession happened to be prostitution and was raising money for himself as a prostitution or herself as a prostitution it's his profession or her profession I have nothing to interfere with it that's so, their personal business so your godlike figure is quite happy to be a pimp and I don't I beg your pardon I said your godlike figure is I happy to be a pimp I beg your pardon whoever you happen to be well, is he a pimp or is he not? You know, you're a worthless man. Ooh. You must know pimps because you must be going to prostitute yourself. Oh, burn it. <laughs> oh, what about the Rolls Royces, though? Tough titties. Uh, let me see if this is it. No, I can't play that because if you play any of their stuff, they'll... Copyright it. They're crazy. <sighs> anyway, it's. I think it's when he's on with uh, Donahue. Let's see. Let's try that. It's actually a funny clip. If you've never seen it, it's worth watching. I don't see it, so forget it. We'll go back to our evangelical boys over here two jets that's mine the Dassault Falcon 7X cost 38 million dollars how in the world is Jesse the Planus making that much money to have two jets and one of the jets is 38 million dollars I mean it, that church doesn't even look that big what all of that dumb boomer money. Imagine that pile of dumb boomer money right there. Because nobody else will get us do that money except for people 50 and over, right? That's crazy. Oh, if you're going TikTok, they eating my lunch. TikTok, pocket your tick. I don't care. It don't make a lick of difference. Mm. Well, I heard you have a Falcon 900 too. Yes. You mean you got two jets? You got two cars? You have two yeah. cars? Look at me. False equivalence. Uh, having <laughs> a Prius and a Chevy is not the equivalent of having uh, a Dalton, Dalsalt Falcon that's $11 million and a FX Dassault that's $38 million. So I, I don't buy your equivalence argument there, Jesse. I'm talking to you out there. Do you have two cars? Why do you have two cars? Rah! Because your wife wants one. <laughs> Delta wish they could fly me. Oh, sick burns, dude. Because when I quit flying <laughs> Delta, I <clears throat> lost a ton of money. Mm. Uh, my dream has now come to pass. I've been believing a long... Four million dollars. I want you to imagine how many people could... Christian prosperity teachers are some of the worst people on earth promising that if you give to their ministries, you can expect God to pay you back and more. Starseeds. Anything that feeds you, you must feed it. If you don't feed anything else, common sense. It's like a baby bird and a mama bird. The mama bird feeds and she spit it back up to feed you. Right? I mean, that's the circle of life, bro. Just you feed what's feeding you. You bless. What's blessing you? 
where you're lending to the Lord. I know you're like me. You want God to repay you. Nobody can repay you like him. You cannot outgive God. And mm. so the more you give, the more he's going to do for you. Mm. Millions, especially the poor and the desperate, have been deceived by this false prosperity gospel. It reminds me of the multi-level marketing. Or uh, Remember Don LaPree? <clears throat> it's kind of like Don LaPree because in one way, they're actually not lying to you. You say, what? How could they not be lying? How could the TV prosperity preachers not be lying? That's crazy. I'm going to show you how. Uh, and I'm going to use the wisdom of Don LaPree. <laughs> uh, by placing one tiny little ad in a classified, I learned to make $10,000 in my first month. And you say, what? Yes. Let's learn from the master himself, Don LaPree. Who remembers Don LaPree? Shout out to everybody that is millennial and up in the audience. You will know who Don LaPree is because every night at about 11 or 12, the cable channels would all go off air, right? Do they still do this? I don't even know. I mean, I literally haven't watched cable since, I don't know, the 90s. So I have no idea. I mean, maybe if I'm over at, uh, a, the only people that have cable are like boomers and grandparents, right? They still have cable. Um, but Don LaPree would come on every night. And there was all kinds of Don LaPree ads. And Don LaPree tells you how to make money selling tiny classified ads. So it's like a meta, it's like a meta marketing, right? But I'm going somewhere with this because... What Don LaPree is telling you is how to do what Don LaPree does to make money. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's like to really make money is to become Don LaPree. By the way, I think Don LaPree got killed because he got into a bunch of debt with a bunch of bigger level scammers than him, I think. Uh, but Incredible let me show you what I mean. That I have seen. The second way to make money that I stumbled onto yes. was placing tiny classified ads in the newspaper. If you create and test one tiny classified ad in the newspaper, tiny, like this big, like this big, thirty to forty dollars profit in a week, it could make you a fortune. Yes, because it's thirty forty dollars profit a week every single ad. Do ten thousand ads. Psh, that's like a million dollars a week, dude. Secret is learning how to take that one tiny classified ad yes. that just made thirty to forty dollars profit in a week, right? And to realize that you could now take I'm gonna that call the same number right now, dude. exact ad and place it in up to what if I get what if I get a hold of Don right now? That's five seven seven nine eight ads that made nine eight to forty dollars profit Look, in a week. I'm gonna do and it. I place those ads in around a thousand. We're calling Don Lapree. Dude, who out there, some of y'all's already calling him. I'm trying to call Don LaPree. I want to make $10,000 a week. 1-800-577-9898. So, and y'all already called him, so now I can't talk to him. So you're missing me. I'm missing out because of y'all. other newspapers around the country. That's how I generated over $50,000 a week. On... 50000 a week? Damn, Don. Damn, Don. So what I'm saying is, why did I go to Don LaPree? I'm trying to teach y'all something. I'm trying to teach you something. What Don LaPree's secret really was, was learning how to do what Don LaPree does. So if you want to make money, then you sell a course on how to become a teacher of guys to make money. You see what I'm saying? Don LaPree's course is teaching you to become Don LaPree to sell courses to make money to be done. It's meta, dude. It's like... It's like Ouroboros level. I mean, it's kind of mind blowing, right? So that's what I'm talking about. Prosperity preachers, if you are good enough, you could become the prosperity preacher and thus all of the things they're saying are actually true. See what I'm saying? You see that, you see that logic right there? I just blew your mind. Put your hand on your head like that. Heal them bald spots. Bald up. spots, I call you gone. Mm. Oh, didn't work for Get that. Get your hand dude. on your head like that. Oh. 
Bald spots, I call you gone. Mm. Hair grow. Oh, look at that. It works. Hair grow. Hair grow. Put <laughs> your hand on your head like that. Yes. I called my son. I said, listen, go find that Rolls Royce. He said, hi. I said, go find it. I don't care. Play on, it. player. Go around. Creflo looking like a young Denzel right there. Creflo got a Get little Denzel like... in him. I called my son. I said, is that Creflo or is that Denzel for a second? I said, listen. Listen. Go find that Rolls Royce. He said, hi. Hey, huh? I said, go find it. I don't care go what you got to do. Go around the nation hey, in every bro. state you got to. But you find that Rolls Royce. That was God's love that he was trying to show on me. Mm. And I let people bundles talk me out. And that was the year I got Her free from people. Bro. Free from colored folks. Free from church folks. I got free from white folks. I got free from everybody, praise God. Mm. Uh, get, get out of here. Mm. Get me out of here. This is Tim Ross, the senior pastor of Embassy City Church, and I want you to notice how blasphemous these prosperity preachers can get. We don't make it rain on booty cheeks. Hey, but why you dissing him when my hair just growed, right? You trying to talk smack about Ken Copeland? My hair just growed. You got owned. We don't make it. You just a Pharisee trying to critique my. And this is where the you just jealous. You don't want this prosperity. This is Tim Ross, the senior pastor of Embassy City Church, and I want you to notice how blasphemous these prosperity preachers can get. We don't make it rain on booty cheeks. We don't make it rain on strippers. We don't we make it rain on booty one cheeks. Stripper. And that's the one that took off glory. What? To put on humanity. We don't make it rain and on booty cheeks. And they get butt naked on a cross to die for both you and. And it the preaches wow. Makes, do you know Jesus? Preachers going crazy. Jesus was Jesus was so And some of you need to step into blessing mm -hmm. and you do that with an act of faith. Yes. Mm. Three hundred dollars. Damn. Why is that significant? It's significant, number one, because it got your attention. And mm. go back and let you go. With the bill that has been passed down by Supreme Court, mm -hmm. how do you as a pastor handle that if there should be a point where a gay couple would come to you and ask you to marry them? Right now, at this point, that's something that I wouldn't do, but that doesn't mean that they can't go outside of me and do that. Mm -hmm. If the Supreme Court was not legislating mm -hmm. that churches would have to do it, they just mm -hmm. made it possible that gay people... Hell no! Prosperity gospel, horrendous. I, I don't carry a wallet. I carry one of these things. Louis Vuitton. You know, you know Jerry Sabelle taught me to just go Louis Vuitton. Uh-uh. I, I got Louis Vuitton underwear. I got all kinds of stuff. I got a Gucci. And Jerry my showed Gucci me how to do wallet. all that stuff. So he Louis Vuitton. When they walk in, they go, Louis here. I, I don't carry a wallet. I carry one of these things. I live in the biggest house in the state of Louisiana. Damn. I have the biggest house of any preacher in America. Damn. I don't mean that arrogantly or pridefully. <laughs> Hair grow. My house, La Maison de Reve, the house of dreams. Hair grow. You like going with the wind? My house has that same staircase. Jesse Plans, he got that Solomon flow going. He got the biggest. He got the Solomon. He got a temple out there. He's got that Solomon flow. The prosperity gospel is not consistent. Yeah, but neither are you, evangelical, weird-looking dude. I have a powerful word to speak to you this morning. I want you to hear these promises from God that God wants you to be rich. That's right, God will sh- And I was out there one day, and I pulled it out of the hangar. And I'm polishing it. Man, I'm telling you, just polishing it. And these two, two you young men came up there, and they, they're both preacher, preacher boys, you know. Came up and said, Brother Copeland, and is that is that the new airplane? I said, well, it's not new, but it's new to me. They said, oh, think about that. The Lord's airplane. I said, no, it isn't. Huh? I said, no, this doesn't belong to the Lord. He gave it to me. I dedicated it to him. But it's mine. Her grow. Her uh, grow. And I was out there one day, and I pulled it out of the hangar. 
and polishing it. Man, I'm telling you, mm. just polishing it. And these two, two, two young men came up there, and they, they're both preacher, preacher boys, you know, came up and said, Brother Copeland, and is that is that the new airplane? I said, well, it's not new. But Doesn't he just look like a devil? I mean, look at that dude's face. That guy looks like a demon. It's just, who doesn't have the sensibilities and the discernment to see that, like, that dude looks like a demon? It's new to me. They said, oh, oh. Think about that. The Lord's airplane. I said, no, it didn't. Huh? I said, no, this doesn't belong to the Lord. He gave it to me. Oh, actually, ooh, I kind of, I kind of agree with Copeland right here. I mean, God doesn't need an airplane. Therefore, he must have given it to Kenneth Copeland. Pretty solid logic right there. This is why people don't trust the church. They are some of the most popular and flashy TV evangelists in the country. These men appear to have made a lot of money. Yeah, this is an atheism factor, exactly. Money, and they travel, well, like kings. When our you, you own a $45 million airplane. Yeah, but you don't know what I paid for. I live in the biggest house in the state of Louisiana. I have the biggest house of any preacher in America. Mm. Now, I don't mean that arrogantly or pridefully. I like brand new money. I just, I don't want any money around me that's not. See it. They freak out, man. They go, look at this plane. I flew it to the Kentucky Derby. You ought to see people, they're going. Ah! Wow, brother. Watch it eat. Y'all just jealous because y'all ain't blessed. That's all I'm trying to say. Y'all just jealous because you ain't blessed. All right, now look, it's enough of that. Remember, head on over to chalk.com. Show sponsor is chalk.com. We got the new product out, Chad Mode. They even use the Chad meme on Chad Mode, which is a clean pre-workout. Ramp yourself up with Chad Mode right there in the show description, in the chat as well. Use the promo code J50 to get 50% off that great Chad Mode project uh, product right there. Now, the thesis was, as I said, that all of this is really lending to dissociation on a mass scale. Now, what's dissociation? Well, that's the idea that the psyche, the, psycho the, the normal conscious state of the person is dissociated from the waking state in some sort of division, some sort of split. It's kind of a lighter version, a fugue state, a lighter version of what is called MPD DID, right? MPD DID though is the permanent fissure, not just a uh, dissociative state for a time period, right? Like let's say uh, you had a car accident, you went into a state of shock. You know, you're kind of a, a, veg a vegetable there, right? That's a temporary dissociative state. But for people who are abused or have tough situations when they're young, and I'm not going to play this whole thing. We're just going to play one of these uh, segments here. Hopefully I can get away with it because it's an old, probably not copyright documentary. Let's see. But uh, MPD DID is like the advanced permanent version of that. And when I say permanent, I don't mean those people can't be heal healed. It seems like they can in some cases. I'm not an expert on this, not a psychologist. I have read multiple books on MPD DID though from psychiatrists, psychologist people. I do not just mean a conspiracy theorist. I do not just mean people writing about MKUltra. I mean actual uh, uh, people in the psychiatric field, Dr. Colin Ross, uh, the book Switching Time. I forget that doctor's name. That was a fascinating book. Uh, I've read about Kim Nobles. I've read about all these people for, for a long time. So we're going to watch a little bit of this, especially the first girl segment here. This is a classic documentary. Everybody should watch. I recommend, I've recommended it for 10, 15 years. This is the old uh, documentary on MPD. And you're going to notice some interesting patterns with this first girl in this documentary that I think suggest and explain a lot of what's going on. Now, Again, this is the extreme version of 
everything that we just looked at, which is like the mild version. So the, the two different realities, living in two different realities, the reality in your head versus the actual reality in the real world, right? So I'm arguing that the new agey stuff, the star seeds, these, all these occults basically, and uh, the witches are operating on the same lower, this potential double mind and that the superstition and all that over time degrades the mind and can actually lead to the madness. It doesn't have to be MPD, DID. You could just be, you could go totally, I mean, schizophrenia is kind of close to, uh, I mean, it's different from MPD, DID, but it's similar in the sense that you've got, you know, all kinds of voices in the head, right? So let's watch some of this. You'll see what I mean. In this rare research film from the 1920s, a woman has different personalities who believe they are separate people. One is a male who is not comfortable in women's clothes. Another Did you notice that? Within her altars, one of them is a believes is believed to be a male. So a person is perceiving a different reality in their head than their biological physiognomy. That sounds like a lot of what's going on today. Unknown depths of their minds. How can they search for the deadly memories that hold the secrets of their past and the promise of their healing? Now, pay attention because, and we're not going to watch it all. I'll give you the link. You can watch the whole documentary on your own later, but pay attention to when you watch the full documentary. If I recall, it's been a few years since I've watched this, but the first woman and the, the police officer guy uh, were, according to their own testimony, brought up in SRA situation. The middle woman, I forget, I think she was just perhaps abused, but at least two of the three of these people in the documentary were under SRA. Twice a week, Gretchen walks across town to see her therapist. She can't afford a car because what little money she has goes for therapy. Gretchen is divorced and has two children who she hardly ever sees. It just hit me that I'm 34. And what is wrong? Gretchen's problems began when she was a child. I, I always felt different. I didn't feel like I was like everyone else or anyone else. Um, and I thought I was crazy and I would hear that in my head too. We are so good at hiding ourselves. In upstate New York. Okay. Anything else? I want to clarify. Um, I thought the subordinate was a higher, more general. And well, subordinate. Okay. I've got it backwards? you got it backwards. Right. Superordinate. Gretchen is also studying art and has classes in painting and sculpture. It's difficult for me in school a lot. Something occurs in the class and we're instantly overwhelmed. I need to find a safe place. I need to run out of the room and find a safe place to be. When Gretchen is in distress, she switches to a personality that is emotionally stronger. You know, if Gretchen's having a hard day, um, I, I come out and, and I go to class. I take exams, I, I, can, I study. I, and, and a lot of that's easier for me to do than it is for her. I, I just seem to pick up concepts faster. She gets so nervous and stuff. An aggressive personality emerges when Gretchen must be assertive and handle stressful situations. The personality, who goes by the name of myself, is often hostile and critical of Gretchen. She gets so overwhelmed that she can't think clearly. Um, she becomes frightened. She becomes depressed and non-functional. She just doesn't function. She, she will just sit and do nothing. When others come out, I, I don't always know what's happening. What happens to me is I, I get pulled in. I feel like I'm just shutting down. I'm, I'm very far away. I can't, then I have no conscious awareness of what's going on out here. 
keep very still. When Gretchen switches to another personality, she is often unconscious while the other personality is in control. Sometimes she loses hours, sometimes a whole day. Gretchen communicates with her other personalities by writing back and forth in a journal. My writing myself. Each personality has a different handwriting. I requested when we started this that please, when someone is out, will they please write the date, the day, and the time, and where they were, who they might have seen. If they Gretchen experiences panic attacks that are triggered by certain sights and sounds. The attacks can happen any place, at any time. Gretchen is mutilated by a personality that feels she should be hurt and punished. The mutilation takes the form of cutting and happens outside of Gretchen's knowledge or control. She, when I came out, I was, I was a, a man. I'm sorry, I forgot that uh, I turned it off while I was playing that clip, my uh, my mic. Anyway, what I was going to say is that the <clears throat> I'm not going to play this whole thing. I'll put it in the chat for you guys to watch. But what you realize is that in her case, the abuse was very young. And it, in her in her case, she claims SRA. And then the cop also, the, the third person in the documentary also says SRA. And uh, I don't think these people are all acting. I think this is real. And, um, you know, I've read a lot on this topic, even from people who treat people with this phenomena. And so you can watch the full documentary there and uh, see for yourself what I mean. But what you'll what you'll notice is that this is the extreme form of dissociation to where there are multiple personalities, right? Alters. And it's a very fascinating, weird, creepy, traumatic situation. So I... But I do recommend, because I think that these kinds of studies shed light on the dangers of contradictory worldviews. They're sort of like very light versions of this, which is the extreme form of it. And so when the population gets traumatized, the population experiences types of dissociation and double think and double mind. Kenya has $15. When are you doing another TikTok live? Um... I'm not sure. I mean, it's kind of annoying and I'm kind of taking a break from debating. Uh, it's just getting on my nerves. I think we have a debate maybe in January. I've already agreed to that, so I'll probably do it, but I'm just kind of getting, I get, and this happens every few months. Like I'll do a year of debating and then I get sick of it and then I take six months off of debating. So this is a cycle that I usually do. Ortho EV $10. Jay, I love you. I love your work. I came out of the goofy word of faith movement it's pretty clear that this is all connected yeah exactly i found the ancient church in 2018 and i'm eastern orthodox rokor well that's uh really cool evie glad to hear that and uh yeah i think you're right to make the connection between it's like magical thinking right and the people who have severe dissociation from reality it's like a severe version of magical thinking existing in two different realities and ultimately, what is two, existing in two different realities, but to have multiple personalities. Fairy Magdalene, three dollars. When I was in the in the mid to twenty tens, I ran a New Age Angel Number Law of Attraction Facebook page. Wow, dude! Wait, New Age Angel Number Law of Attraction. That's an, it's like a lot of this stuff is like combining different things. I should, should write down like, what's a, let's come up with something that we just made up on the spot. Like I remember one time this new age thing, they put out a, a the African Celtic Egyptian ortho uh, study Bible, the Egyptian Celtic study Bible. 
And I'm like, what in the world is an Egyptian Celtic study? And it's some weird New Age scam thing. So you did a New Age angel number law of attraction. All right, I'm going to come up with my own. Let me think for a second. Uh, let's You do like a roulette wheel. Let's do a, a roulette wheel of New Age terminologies. Let's look over here on Google. Let's see. New Age terms. And then we're going to mix them up together. And you can be creative in the audience to come up with your own New Age uh, grift. Let's see. What's the New Age? Let's see. Oh, yeah. Here we go. That's what I'm talking about. We got, it's divided up between social movements, meditative movements, music, history, influences, and philosophies. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Let's see. What do y'all, let's, let's mix it up a little bit. Let's see. Uh, dance. I want dance on here. All right. I like dance. Everybody else pick one. And I guys in the audience, as you see me scrolling through these, pick one that you like. Can y'all see this? Okay. Um, I like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do dance and I'm going to do Kabbalah. All right. Uh, some of y'all might want to do Sufism. We just talked about that. We just did Wicca. You might want to do that. Here's some of the practices. Um, uh, how about breatharian? All right, let's. I'm gonna I'm borrow a little of breatharian. That's the people that believe that you can basically just live on breathing or master your breathing. Some of y'all might want some crystals. Some of y'all might want to do some fruitarianism or some chakras. You got some Reiki. You got a little bit of pyramid power in there. Um, here's some more terms: perception. Soul travel, subtle bodies, lucid dreaming, Gaia. Uh, don't forget some of your uh, abilities. I'm going to put, let's see, out of these abilities, what's my favorite? Automatic writing, charismatic, clairvoyance, dream. dream. Okay. Yes, oh, I'm liking this. Okay, I got a good one. Are y'all picking your stuff? Ooh, ooh, Atlantis. I oh, gotta use Atlantis. Okay, alchemy. That's there we go. That's that's classic. So I like to mix it up when I come up with a, a new age grift, because I don't want to have, I don't want it to be totally foreign. So I want some of the classics in there, but I also want it to be a little foreign, so that it's not all you know. It's got a little bit of exotic going on, you know. So what did y'all come up with for your uh, new age grift? And it's kind of like Mad Libs. And I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read what y'all put in the chat. Let's see who we got. Let's see. We got the Akashic Records Twin Flame Group. Okay. Uh, we got the Black Hebrew Viking Crystal Chaos Magic Breath Work. That's kind of close to mine. Mine was Kabbalah Dream Dance Breath Work that's based around Atlantean alchemy. What do you think of that? Uh, Rosicrucian Kabbalah Dance. Rob, that's a pretty good one. That's actually pretty close to what we do in my workshop. Um, we got some more. Enochian Return of the Nephilim Chant. Ooh, that's unique. I like that one. I ain't heard that one. Breath of Life. Shout out to the Breath of Life. Me go the Breath of Life. Let's see. Breast Milkarian. That's a classic. Okay. Atlantean non-binary sun gazing. I, I, I'm down with that. Let's let's do a retreat right now. Near death experience, lucid dreaming. I like that one. Uh, let's see. No touch knockout levitation in the Kamahamana. Okay, uh, that one's out there. I like it. Dog headed magical angelology. That's I'm getting on the dark side. Doing the dark arts. Uh, Machu, Machu Picchu menstrual cup. There we go. Now we're talking. Let's just get to the nitty gritty. Astral barre exercise classes. Okay. Shangri-La Odic force numerology. I like it. I like it. Rosicrucian Thelemic Reiki paradigm shift. I like that. 
Y'all know what I, y'all are feeling me. Stonehenge Feng Shui. Yes, there we go. <laughs> These are great. Sacred Medicine Boofing Buffet. There we go. All right. Uh, Magical Melatonin Kangs. That's what I'm talking about. But I'm going to have to stick with my Kabbalah Dream Dance Breathwork shop based around Atlantean Alchemy. So uh, sign up if you guys want to over at jasonalsis.com for <laughs> Kabbalah Dream. Where's the freaking... Get it off of this garbage. <laughs> Shout out to Don LaPree, the original con man for all this stuff, right? We got some good ones there, y'all. Y'all, y'all, I like, I like what, I like, I like while where y'all going with that? Ecstatic anthroposophic Aquarian iri iridiology. Okay, okay. Thought tarot time travel. That's the best one. That's right. That's right there. We got a few uh, thought tarot time travelers up in my Kabbalah Dream Dance Breathwork class, based around Atlantean alchemy. If you guys would also remember, you can um, get access to my philosophy course to achieve the highest levels and degrees of Kabbalah Dream Dance Breathwork status to vibrate at the highest chakra levels that you can. My philosophy course is right here in the show description over at Richard's Autonomy Agora Marketplace. Shout out to Richard Grove, our good buddy. Be sure to subscribe over at Rockfin at Ro a Grand Theft World because... That's the best way to raise your vibrational consciousness and to achieve Pleiadian uh, Kundalini butt chakra synthesis with Richard Grove. And you can do that right here by going over to Rockfin, clicking that. And then you get over here and you get on here and you watch Grand Theft World. Sister podcast over there. Brother, son, sister podcast. There's a rainbow around the moon. There's a rainbow around the moon. And there's a rainbow around the moon. There's a rainbow, ho ho, rainbow around the moon. Not many of y'all listeners will remember that. That's a Jay's analysis classic. Okay. When we, we were streaming that live streaming that back in the day, who even remembers that? Man, I know BLA he's in the chat, right? He remembers that. That's old. That's old. That's me and Tristan day. Let's like back 2017, 18 with Tristan, right? That's a, that's a Ananda Das channel, right? Sound like Led Zeppelin starting up. I don't even know which Led Zeppelin. It's not that one. One of the Led Zeppelin songs starts. Is it Stairway to Heaven? There's a rainbow. There's a rainbow around the moon. There's a rainbow. She needs to get off that vegan diet. Yikes. There's a rainbow. There's a rainbow. that bard back there they got a dang renaissance bard <laughs> look at that bard gear that's a renaissance bard johnny depp back there oh, i can go bass with it baritone
Y'all feel that? I know you did. We all felt them vibes. We just raised the consciousness. Good news. Guess what? With y'all singing with me, Bard Maxing with me, you're all official star seeds. You're all official uh, initiates. And you're no longer muggles. Good news. We all win. 360 win. M uh, MSG like a brake light. One dollars. I thought we were for objective be beauty. Uh, when will you bring the bookshelf back? Make a poll and it will be unanimous. Look, dude, I'm just at a different place. The bookshelf didn't go anywhere. It still exists. And when I'm at that place, it will be the bookshelf. Problem solved. Bon Jovi 1912. Bon Jovi 1912. $70. He wins the super chat race tonight. Thank you so much, Bon Jovi. Big fat super chat. Wow. See, everybody loves these riff streams where we come and re we react and we riff and then you get serenaded there's a rainbow around the moon i was mooning <laughs> beagle eye visions two dollars you are always challenging people to debate why don't you debate mark passio mark passio natural law I have asked many times for Mark Passio to debate, um, and we have not ever arranged a debate. So I would assume that that means that Mark Passio does not want to debate. Gary Hines, $3. Check out Soldier of Jesus. Ugh. He's a evangelical, former MMA street evangelical. I'll pass on that, dude. AC, $50. Cringe core request. Gerald Gardner smacks <laughs> Wiccan butts, and I do not lie. Oh, you mean a rap? He smacks Wiccan butts and he does not lie. How's that? You want you want to mix a lot? Beepers. Bass. Bone Man 538. Thank you for that fat super chat AC. Really appreciate that. Moon menstruation clocks where they fly on a double-minded witch broom. The enmity between the two seeds. Dang, dude. You just got, again, Bone Man always brings that heavy mysticism. I mean, Bone Man literally writes in mystical code. It's like poetry. Like I have to, I can't decipher the mystical hieroglyphics of my boy Bone Man. Thank you so much. There's a rainbow, ho ho. There's a rain, ho ho ho, ho around the moon. Everybody have a good night.